that I was doing and really put that into what I'm doing now. But um, even with that, there was so much more that I just wasn't doing. And um, the way that technology is advancing and whatnot, I, I got to lay back at it. Like, I'm, you know, I'm always on my humble with my chill. And you can't be like that in business. You can't be like that in a magazine. So it's kind of like conflicting ages now where I, I, I can't really be who I want to be. I got to be somebody else who wants to this constant research and things and whatnot um, to take us to that, that next plateau. Like I was saying before, like people expect a certain level of professionalism when you come to the door. If you can't help somebody else make money, then they know that you can't make money on your own. That's the problem. And that's, that's a personal thing that I've dealt with because I, you know, I uh, value, value on yourself and not put a monetary dollar on everything that you do, but you have to. You've got to. If you expect to get to that next point, I've only published one issue so far, and um, when I was doing it the first time, I had a lot of assistance with it, but now I'm like, you know, I branched off, I wanted to do it on my own, and like I said, there's it, just a lot of other obstacles that I have to face, like, before when we did the first print edition, I didn't have advertisers, now, I do have advertisers, so I have to relay out the magazine in accordance with the type of people and the type of advertisers that I have in there, but then also, nobody showed me how to put advertisements up on my website. Nobody so told me how to really go out there and get advertisers and not so much sell exposure because you don't want to just put them in front of people. You want to have people you want to have people buy into the things that they're doing. And you don't want to just group yourself with any old person. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a whole bunch of like imaging and a whole bunch of uh, understanding different partnerships or whatnot. Because you, you come to other people and create whole time. You know what I'm saying? You might take this shoe off, I don't want that shoe today, I want this shoe. And it's, it's really the same thing. Different partnerships, so it's a lot, man. And I just keep telling myself, like, I know that I'm gonna make it, and I know that I'm stunning to make it. And you gotta have those bumps in the road. You don't just pop up and you super saying three. You know what I'm saying? Like, go who went through the different stages to get to that, that, that level. Like, and it's just a lot, man. So I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm taking it with strides, I'm doing as much research as I can, Ew. and I'm demanding shopping. more of myself than I am demanding of other people outside.
we don't have people breaking it down enough. It's like, why politics should matter to me? So as far as like different conspiracy theories and stuff go, I understand like I understand how people are controlled on an emotional level, spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever level that they're controlled on. And my thing is, with what I have and the type of people that I know, how can I get people involved in information that they may not necessarily care for? And um, there's this term, the gamification called uh, chocolate covered rocket, where if that's not a feeling. Like, you don't want to eat chocolate covered broccoli. But the thing is, you can manufacture it in a way that makes it consumable. Like, video games are an ignorant, uh, video games are interactive books. Sure. You just can't taste it, you just can't smell it. Right? They take you on a storyline about whatever's going on. So, if I can take you on a storyline about Halo and sci fi and ships and aliens and, you know, waging a war, understanding who, um, who has the chief is as a person, that means I can do the same thing with animals. I can create therapeutic video games that educate people on why animals should be cared for, why the environment should be cared for, the side effects of pollution from now and 50 years later. You know what I'm saying? That's telling the story. A, a lot of our peers play video games. The average video game player is 35. Because that means video games have really been out since what, like the 80s. And then you can also say that the average, so the average gamer is 35, but then you can say in between that span, you have another gamer that's like about 15. So it's like a 20 year difference between the teenage gamers and the average age of a video game. And, um, so now you look at all that stuff, you can see how video games have evolved and see who's following who as far as even the indie games that are built. They have a lot of those holistic uh, aspects that we enjoy, you know what I'm saying? But if, even with that, if people are not making games for games, they're only making games for money, then people need to know that. They need to know that they're buying a half ass game that's sixty dollars, knowing that the whole game is a lot of But you gotta, you gotta pay even more to accessorize. You think I'm saying like I'm playing? And all Macau University. I bought the game because I want to enjoy it. I didn't buy the game to be put in the cash system. And that's even with that. that that's the thing. You gotta cash the space. They can spend sixty, eighty, and a hundred dollars. So you just know what you're doing for my friend, or you trying to actually give me a spending experience that's worth while. And that's what I'm doing. Like I want to bring back quality content to what's going on in here and, and the, the quality content is anything that's just going on. Like we have the ability to do it, but it takes time. And people are not people are not gonna say they're not willing to do it. That's that aspect of the starving artist that you don't really see in a lot of people. Or maybe it's not publicized. So again, like the main course is about is telling the story of everyday people, making information relevant. Talking about what the homeless people are going through. Talking about what politicians are going through. They're homeless like everything's going on with the COVID right now, right? And of course it's a situation with the homeless with, with, with the homeless people. But you have people, homeless people out there that want to be homeless, who don't want help, who want to be in the way. And how do you handle that as a politician? Nobody's thinking about that. What happens when you have a family member that's in your crib that don't want to work, but just want to live off you, but then don't want to move? What do you do about that? That's the aspect of the story that nobody's talking about. So how do you think all right, we get, I'm getting ready to get off. Oh, yeah, um, I'm get off too. Do I have your permission to air your image on uh, multiple media outlets? Yes, you do. And your name is? Ryan Carter, publisher and founder of Main Course BHL. Check us out at www.maincoursebhl.com. Look forward to everything that we're putting out. And thank you. Thank you. I'm ahead. I'm finding so, so many, many different mentalities today. It, 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 it seems hard. It seems challenging. challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything, everything else, else is a challenge. Is a challenge. challenge. Um, um, so, 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 I'm ready.